Section 1 and you shall command this passage tells about the Shechen Azir Enpin and the Mukba in the context of building the tabernacle in the title verse Rabbi Shimon finds that and you is written to be inclusive of the Shechen Rabbi Yitzhak believes that the upper light Zir Enpin and the lower light the Mukba are included in that phrase he says that the sons Zir Enpin dwelt in the moon and Mukba and they came together to dwell upon the work of the tabernacle Rabbi. Shimon talks about the Shechen that is called heart and the Mukba that is called heart so that when the sun dwells in the moon everything is replete with everything we are also told that the unity of the name and you includes male and female and therefore all that are was hearted those who built the tabernacle were able to do so only after the Holy Spirit secretly whispered to them how it should be done since the Holy Spirit is alluded to in the name and you Rabbi Shimon prays that. The supernal light will not move away from the lower light because when it does light is not present in the world it was because of this that the temple was destroyed in the days of Jeremiah and although the temple was later rebuilt the light did not return properly even then the name Isaiah brings redemption and the return of the supernal light and the final rebuilding of the temple Rabbi Shimon explains that vast significance of the two names Jeremiah and Isaiah one meaning shall rise and the other meaning salvation and tells us that it is a combination of the letters in names that brings about action according to their meaning both good and evil the letters of the holy names cause supernal secrets to appear according to the meaning of the name for the letters themselves cause holy supernal secrets to appear in them one and you shall command the children of Israel Shema 2720 and take you to your and your brother Shema 281 Rabbi Shia said why is this different then? All other places for it is written and take you to you and you shall speak to all that are wise hearted of it three and you shall command the children of Israel take you also to you the best spices of pure mer Shema 3023 it is not written as in all other places and offer and speak and command and take he answers but everything is done with a supernal secret in order to include the Shechina with him because the Shechina is called you and when it is written and you it is done. To include the Shechina with him in commanding speaking etc to Rabbi Yitzhak said the upper light which is Zeir and the lower light which is the Nukba are included together in and you because you is the name of the Nukba is mentioned before and the extra Vav equals and is Zeir and as you say and you do preserve them all Nechmai 96 that alludes to Zeir and and the Nukba therefore it is not written and take to you Aaron your brother and command the children of Israel and Speak to all that are wise hearted because at that time the sun which is Zeir and dwelt in the moon which is the Mukba and they came together namely Zeir and and the Mukba to dwell upon the craftsmanship of this work therefore it is written of them and you wish to note Zeir and and the Mukba Rabbi Lazar said from your IT is implied that the Holy One blessed be he dwelt upon the craft of the work of the tabernacle as written in whom Hashem put wisdom and understanding Shema 361. 3 Rabbi Shimon said from this IT is implied that Zeir and and the Mukba dwelt upon the craft of the work of the tabernacle as it is written and you shall speak to all that are wise hearted whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom Shema 283 whom sing I have filled should have been in plural if it refers to the wise hearted but whom I have filled is in singular referring to that heart the Shechina that is called heart as is written and the spirit of Hashem shall rest upon him it. Spirit of wisdom Yeshayah 112 therefore it should say whom sing I have filled with the spirit of wisdom to teach that the sun which is Zeir and dwells in the moon which is the Nukba that is called heart replete with everything therefore they are all recorded namely Zeir and and the Nukba throughout the text of the work of the tabernacle that it is written of the menu which alludes to Zeir and and the Nukba Rabbi Lazar said to him if so how are all these instances of menu explained in the course of the passages if we explain that they pertain to Zeir and and the Nukba before Rabbi Shimon said to him they are all satisfactorily defined and take you to you means that he said to Moses to take in you which is Zeir and and the Nukba to Aaron namely to properly unite in him and take to him the secret of the holy name and you similarly and you shall speak to all that are wise hearted means that he should speak and bring near and declare the unity of it. Name and you which is male and female to all that are wise hearted for they all came to do the work of the tabernacle only after the Holy Spirit spoke to them and secretly whispered to them how to do it only then did they do the work in the same manner and you shall command the children of Israel meaning the Holy Spirit which is alluded to in the name and you shall command the children of Israel and shine on them so they do the work with complete willingness so we have established what and take you also to you Shema 3023 means and so and take you to you and all of these occurrences of and you that are written here are by the work of the tabernacle for it was all done by means of the name and you five Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying but and you Hashem be not far from me oh my strength haste you to help me Tehillim 2220 and and you Hashem you is the Nukba and the name Yud Hey Bab Hey Hashem is Zeir and he prays that it all shall become one that they shall be united together be not far means he shall not distance himself and leave him that the supernal light Zeir and shall not move away from the lower light the Nukba because when the supernal light moves away from the lower light every light is darkened and is not present in the world because the world receives only from Malchud which is the lower light if the supernal light which is Zeir and does not illuminate in her she has nothing to shine to this world six because of this the temple was destroyed in the days of Jeremiah meaning because Zeir and was removed from Malchud although it was later rebuilt namely the second temple nonetheless the light did not properly return to its place therefore the name of the prophet who predicted this is Jeremiah which is composed of the letters Yerim and shall rise Yud Hey which means the rising of the supernal light high up from Malchud and it did not again afterwards illuminate properly during the second temple the name Jeremiah signifies that the supernal light was gone up from Malchut and did not return to its place. The temple was destroyed and the luminaries were darkened seven. But the name Isaiah, which is composed of the letters Yeshang Salvation Yud Hava, brings redemption and the return of the supernal light to its place to Malchut, the rebuilding of the temple, and ensures that every goodness and every light will return as before. Therefore, the names of these two prophets are in opposition to each other. For the name of one means Yud Hava will rise, and the name of the other is the opposite. Yud Hava will save the name causes, and the combination of the letters with each other brings about action according to their meaning, both good and evil. And based on the secret is the combination of the letters of the holy names, and also the letters on their own. They cause supernal secrets to appear according to the meaning of the name for the letters themselves cause holy supernal secrets to. Appear in them section 2 the secret of the letters of the holy name in the section Rabbi Shimon expounds upon the shapes of letters and vowels he tells us that the Svirat of Chakma are called dots corresponding to the vowels the purpose of all permutations of the holy name I invent is to reveal the wisdom and thought Rabbi Shimon then talks at length about the holy name and says that the entire secret of the holy name is based on the letter Yud while the first Hey is the secret of the sanctuary we learn that there are large letters above and small letters below there are holy supernal letters above in Bina that are drawn only by willing of the spirit and heart without any speech at all and there are lower holy names in Malchut that are drawn by speech and by directing thought and will towards them there are also other names below of the other side the Bob and Yud Hey Bob hey is the secret of the form of man and the last Hey is Malchut the Bob. Between the two Hays therefore unites the upper world bind with the lower world Malchut and they become one eight. The first secret is Yud of Yud Hay Bab Hay which is the first point namely Chakma which stands upon nine pillars that support it. They are stationed to the four directions of the world south, north, east and west which are the three columns and Malchut. Similarly the end of thought the last point which is Malchut stands to the four directions of the world which are south, north, east and west. The three columns and Malchut that receives them they are all equal one to the other except that the upper point which is Yud of Yud Hay Bab Hay is male and the last point which is Malchut is female nine. This Yud which is Chakma has no body when it is clothed by them it stands on nine pillars which are Chakma binded at Chisid Bure Tifer at Netzach Hot and Yizid according to the secret of the letter final MEM without a circle even though the letter Samek is round and shaped. Like a circle Yud is the secret of Samek and first Hay is the secret of final MEM according to the secret of the letters that are engraved with dots meaning those letters that allude to the
They are considered its chariot. They are not called by name just by the secret of the nine dots vowels in the Torah which are comets attached siri. The first three Svirat Segal SHVA and Golam are Chisid Bira and Tiferet Chirik Kubat Shurat that are also called Chirik Shurat Malafam are Netzach Hot and Yezid because the Svirat of Chakma are called dots 13 in the secret of the book of Adam. These nine that are eight divided into permutations of letters of the holy name. This is in order to combine and unite them in all these matters because when these eight which are nine travel, meaning when they shine by means of the three columns one after the other, they shine with the illumination of the letter final MEM quadrupled and extract eight lights that appear like nine they divide below to carry the tabernacle 14 they are the permutation of the holy name by means of 72 engraved letters that stem from the secret of the three colors, right, left and central, which are Chisit Bira and Tiferet of Zeir and Pen and they all come from the secret of the three points which are the dimension of the letter Yud namely its top middle and end as mentioned and it illuminates to four directions they are eight points besides Chakma and nine points including Chakma as mentioned for each of the three points of the top middle and end of the Yud includes the three they are nine which are Chakma by Nadat Chisit Bira Tiferet Net Sach and Yezid and they are twelve. Supernal points three to every side from here they descend as twelve to the six extremities when these twelve are engraved on the six extremities of Zeir and Pen there are seventy two names because six times twelve equals seventy two for they are the secret of the holy name of Ayn Bet seventy two they are the holy name that emanates from the twelve points of Yud of Yud Hav Hav fifteen and the wish comes to support thought which is Chakma with the supports of the letter Yud meaning that the purpose of all the Permutations of the name of Ayn Bet 72 is to reveal the Chakma that is in the Yud of Yud Hav that is called thought therefore the letters come permutated in the name of Ayn Bet 72 three letters to each permutation in order to gain favor with the letter Yud of Yud Hav that contains three points, top, middle and end as we have said therefore the permutation comes up only from the essence and root of the secret of the supports of the letter Yud according to the secret of the letter final MEM quadrupled as mentioned for they are the three points top, middle and end which are the essence and root of all the supports that evolve from it which are nine points eight points twelve points seventy two points thus the entire secret of the holy name is based on the letter Yud it all pertains to the same secret meaning the secret of drawing Chakma and exists by means of the luminary which is Bindavarak and the Keter of this Yud which is Abba and Ima as we have said too. Support every letter of the name Yud Hav Hav and the supports the 9, the 8, the 12, and the 72 mentioned above are a chariot to every letter of the name Yud Hav Hav as we have said 16. The second secret is the letter Hay of Yud Hav Hav that stands upon five pillars that support it that emerge from the secret of luminary which is by of Eric and after it was gathered in and ascended above the secret of the curtain 17. This letter is called the Holy Sanctuary. For the point that we mentioned namely the Yud of Yud Hav Hav for everything is based on the secret we spoke of that of the letter final MEM quadrupled here the letter final MEM is not imprinted but rather the letter Hay because here starts the revelation and its chariot is the five pillars we mentioned 18. He explains what the five supports are saying when the light of the luminary illuminates the letter yet it is lit up for from that illumination the luminary projected these nine. Pillars that we said were made, which are the secret of Chakma Banada at Chisit Bura Tiferet Net Sach Hot and Yezid that spread from the top middle and end of Yud as mentioned and then from the illumination that lit the letter Yud the three points of the Yud spread two points up which are at the top of Yud namely the upper tip and the body of the Yud and one point down which is the lower tip of the Yud like the Hebrew dot seagull as we explained when two points expanded in the secret of Chirik and they became three the one which is the central column became two and became one sanctuary after the sanctuary became the first point the secret of the letter Hay became concealed and hidden and stands on other five nineteen there are four concealed together with one point between them in the middle there are five which is Hay just as the lower Hay namely Malchut stands on four namely on three columns and Malchut that receives them and is a point over four meaning that Malchut herself which is a point standing in their midst, here it is also like that and as for it standing on five other supports namely on the hay of Yud Hay Bob Hay it is certainly so because the supernal point the Yud of Yud Hay Bob Hay is of two aspects one on its own and one concealed therefore there are two Hays 20 in the book of secrets of Enoch he says Hay certainly stands on five supports that stem from the luminary which is by Avarik and then this Hay produces five other pillars which are the first Hay of Yud Hay Bob Hay so this Hay is of the secret of ten namely its own five supports and five supports of the Hay of Yud Hay Bob Hay which together are in place of the Yud when Hay of Yud Hay Bob Hay separates from the Hay and returns to its place this Hay stands on five supports the four supports are the three columns and Malchut that receives them and the fifth is the secret of the point in their center and the four supports are included within each other in such a way that there are three columns in each of the four supports which are twelve. They are the thirteen attributes of mercy together with one level added to them, namely the point in the center of the four supports twenty one. These twelve pillars are in the six. Sometimes they are considered as the name of MEM bet forty two and sometimes I in bet seventy two. But this IS when they go down here from the seventy two paths extend in all directions, namely thirty two paths of Chakma. When you subtract thirty two from seventy two, forty remains, which together with the two ears to the right and left equal forty two, which is the secret of the name of MEM bet. These are the forty two supernal large letters in the Torah twenty two. There are large letters and small letters. Large letters are above in Bina and small letters are below in Malchut. Everything below in Malchut is in the likeness of above in Bina because there are holy supernal names in Bina that are drawn only by willing of the spirit and heart without any speech at all, and there are lower holy names in Malchut that are drawn by speech and with directing thought and will towards them. 23 There are other names below which are of the other side which is the side of impurity. These are drawn only by the willingness in an action below to raise to them that which contained in the action below for the impure side awakens only through actions in this world to be defiled through them such as Bilaam and the people of the East countries and all those who are occupied with that other side who awakened it by performing actions below to awaken IT24 Those that are of the other side are not based on any of the imprinted letters of the 22 letters of the Torah except for two which are Chet and Kuf for the Klippah of Yezid is called Chet which is the secret of the children of Chet who negotiated with Abraham about the cave of Machpelah and the Klippah of Malchut is called Kuf they support the other side with the support of the three letters Shin Kuf Resh Hef and Lai that are attached to them but Chet and Kuf frequent them even more therefore in the praise of David Tehillim 145 above is written in the middle of every sentence of every letter after the cantillation mark at Nashda for each sentence begins with a different letter of the alphabet except for these two letters Chet and Kuf namely Hashem is gracious Hebshanan and full of compassion slow to anger and of abundant love Tehillim 1458 which has no bot for it is not written and slow to anger and of abundant love and also Hashem is near Hebkaro to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth Ibid 18 where it is written and to all who call upon him in truth the reason is that Boblet and is the name of the Holy One blessed be he meaning the central column that unites right and left and the other side has no desire for the central column therefore since those letters have an attachment to the other side there is no bob and in the middle of the sentence in order to show that they have in association with the other side 25 he returns to the first subject and says therefore those 42 letters by which this world was created together with the supernal hay of Yud Hay Bob Hay equal 92 there are the 40 remaining from its 72 which together with the two ears right and left as mentioned are 42 each of its five supports comprise 10 which amount to 50 50 plus 42 is 92 there are 90 besides the two ears right and left this is the secret of Enchal Sarah that is 90 years old give birth bear sheet 1717 because Sarah alludes to I am a the upper hay of Yud Hay Bob Hay but it amounts to 92 that is with the two ears when the grade of covenant is added to them which is Yezid which is the eighth firmament and rests on the eighth day meaning that circumcision is at the eighth day 92 
It all pertains to one secret as mentioned. Blessed are they who know the ways of Torah to go in the way of truth. Blessed are they in this world and blessed are they in the world to come. 28. The third secret is the letter Bab. Yudhe Bab. This letter is the secret of the form of man, meaning Zeir and for within him is Yudhe Bab. Fully spelled with Aleph, which amounts to the numerical value of Adam, man, namely 45. As we have learned, we have established that this letter, which is Vav, that alludes to its three extremities, stands on 12 chariots, the 12 of which shine on every extremity in the Bab, and 12 times 6 equals 72. When divided by 3, there are 24 chariots, because 3 times 24 equals 72. In this letter is included the expansion of the form of man corresponding to the arms, which are Chesed and Gvira, the legs, which are Netzach and Hot, and the torso, which is Tifera and Yezid. There are 24 limbs in the arms, 24 in the legs, and 24 in the torso, as we have. Already learned, but they are all concealed in the torso, which is Tiferet, and the body stands in all three twenty fours. All seventy two chariots are included in the body, and because they are all included in it, the Bob expands once, meaning one line that includes them all twenty nine. And he explains the body includes twenty four chariots. They are the head of the Bob with six chariots, and the body of the Bob with eighteen chariots, and six and eighteen equals twenty four. Even though in all there are twelve chariots at each end of the six extremities, and six times twelve by a seventy two, and not twenty four. Assuredly, the body is in them all, but from the aspect of twenty four, meaning when we consider the body as only a third of seventy two, as mentioned above, they are defined as six in the head, namely Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid that are in the head. They are limbs by which to carry the head, namely the three first Tiferet that are called head, and eighteen are the eighteen vertebrae of the spinal cord upon which the head stands and by which the body is supported. 30 all above mentioned 24 chariots expand in one in the head and body of the Bob the 60 Sfirat are all included in the Bob which is the secret of 6 Sfirat Chesed Bure Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yezid each including 10 therefore the measure of the letter Bob the head of the Bob is actually 6 points namely Chesed Bure Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yezid and the body is 18 similarly all the secrets are explained as included in the torso because the arms and legs that are Chesed Bure Netzach and Hot are hidden therefore everything is included in the letter Bob and its form 31 when the letter appears to perfection namely the Bob which is the central column as mentioned all the evil sides are blocked and depart from the moon which is Malchut and do not cover it because the central column cleaves through all the lintels in the firmament and illuminates on it on Malchut the insider is unable to cause any harm when it departs namely the Bob that is the central column it Inside arises, incites, and accuses, and seduces, and can denounce all the people of the world because he is an old and foolish king, as we have already established. 32. The Bab of Yudhi Bab is the light that illuminates the moon, which is Malchut. Even though many lights are included in the Bab, which is Zeir and the light that illuminates the moon is just one expansion that fills it. Zeir and is the secret of the Aleph, which is shaped as a Bab in between two Yudis to its right and left. Namely, Zeir and that is the central column that reconciles and unites the right and left. And he is imprinted with all those secrets that are in the Aleph when he illuminates the moon, which is Malchut. He shines on it with the secret of the Bab, the shape of which is one line, which is the expansion of the central column alone. 33. In the book of Adam, regarding the shape of the letters, he says that the shape of the Bab is one point on top, which alludes to the Yudhi of Yudhi Bab and five. Points below, which are the first hay of Yudhi Hay Bob Hay, the secret of five points, which are five, supports also the measure of the Bob of Yudhi Hay Bob Hay, which is Zeir and is such, namely, it includes in IT Yudhi Hay of Yudhi Hay Bob Hay, which is the secret of the son of Yudhi Hay. Every point of the six points that are in IT is based on the secret of ten, for there is no point that is not completed to ten, for every point has nine supports and chariots, which are its top, middle, and end, each comprising three columns. There are the three points of Seagull with the point itself, it completes ten, for the point on the right has nine supports and chariots, and with itself it is ten, and so it is with the point on the left, and so on all sides. Therefore, all the points comprise ten each and its chariots, they are part of the expansion of the letter Bob. Therefore, everything has the shape of the letter Bob, namely, it has the form of one point above and five points. Thirty-four when the sun, which is Zeir and Entered the moon, which is Malchut, and expansion emerges from this Bob, which is the secret of the covenant, namely Yezid, which is in the likeness of Gimel. Its purpose is to come into the Mukba, which is Malchut, and when all this is included in this expansion of the letter Bob, which is Zeir, and then it is ready to mate with the Mukba. This is the secret of the scripture, and take you to you, Aaron, your brother Shema 281, who came to include the right arm, which is Chesed, that is called Aaron, with the torso, which is Moses, and his sons with him. Ibid refers to his chariots and supports the left arm, is included in Moses, who is a chariot to Zeir, and which is Bob, as it is written, take the Levites, Bibid bar 345, the Levites being the left arm, which is Bura, so the Bob that is Moses includes everything in one expansion, so as to be 135. Therefore, there is unity in this Bob, in the right, left, and center, for the center is Moses, and the right is Aaron, and the left are the Levites, and it is all one, therefore a single expansion is formed which is called one, and there is only one expansion in the Bob, namely one line. This is the secret meaning of 136. The last hay of Yudhi Hay Bob Hay, which is Malchut, becomes a body in the central point. The Bob of Yudhi Hay Bob Hay, which is Zeir and Ben, enters it. So the Bob is located between two points, one above which is IMA and one below which is Malchut. Then the upper world, which is Bani, unites with the lower world, which is Malchut. And they become one as we have established. Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba came and kissed the hands of Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Abba wept and said, Woe to the world when the sun will set, that is Rabbi Shimon, and the world will become dark. 37. Rabbi Lazar said, How do we know that the lakes below, which are Netzach and Hot, that pertain to the secret of the letter Bob, which is Tiferet, are included in the letter Bob? He said to him, It is written, Remember the Torah of Moses, my servant Malachi 322. It is not. Written by prophet to show that everything is included in the Bob which is Tiferet and prophets the secret of Netzach and Hot are included in Moses who is Tiferet therefore it is not necessary to write Moses my prophet the letter Bob is considered one it is but one and one expansion as explained section 3 and take you to you Rabbi Shimon says that Moses the sun did not unite with the moon Malchut until he comprised all aspects including right and left when the offering is proper the shining countenance of God is present in the world in the temple and the other side is subdued and hides and the side of holiness rules with light and joy but when the offering is not done properly or the unison is not performed correctly then the moon is concealed and the other side rules in the world lastly we hear that God did not test Job but instead aroused the insider against him as the insider is constantly coming around to denounce people 38 and take you to you Shema 281 Rabbi Shimon said Moses who is the sun did not unite with the moon which is Malchut until he comprised all aspects in accordance with the secret meaning of the letter Bob as we have established namely he included Aaron and the Levites who are right and left come and behold it is written from among the children of Israel that he may minister to me but to minister to me is spelled with an extra Bob which literally means for its service for the service of the letter Bob assuredly for its service it is as if it were written to serve Bob which is Tiferet to me which is the letter hey namely Malchut to bring in the Bob to unite with the hey so everything will become one blessed are the children of Israel who entered in the secrets of Torah and came out they know the secrets of the ways of the Torah so as to walk the true path 39 he asks why from among the children of Israel he answers nothing is called one or is properly one except from among the children of Israel for the children of Israel stand below to open ways and to illuminate paths and to kindle the candles which are the supernal Sfirot and to take everything from below upwards so that everything shall be one therefore it is written but you who did cleave to Hashem your Elohim Devarim 4440 and take you to you Rabbi Shimon said everything is taken near by one who knows how to affect unity and to serve his master for when the offering is found to be proper. Everything is brought together meaning the right and left sides the shining counten
accepted because it came to pass at the end of days so it came from the other side Abel included a small portion for the other side in his offering with the largest portion for God while Cain included the largest portion for the other side we are also told that Job did not properly arrange his offering either 42 he opened the discussion saying and in process of time let at the end of days it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to Hashem Bershi 43 at the end of days has a secret meaning it is the end of days Hebyamim which is impurity rather than the end of right Hebyamim also days which is holiness he rejected the end of right Hebyamim and sought to bring near the end of days Hebyamim we have established that it is written but go you your way till the end be Daniel 1213 the holy one blessed be he said to Daniel but go you your way till the end be he kept asking him which end the end of days or end of right until he said to him the end of the right 43 this is what David feared as it is written let me know Hashem by Antehalim 395 whether the end of the days or the end of the right and here by Cain it is written and it came to pass at the end of days rather than at the end of the right therefore his offering was not accepted because it all came from the other side 44 come and behold it is written and Abel he also brought Bershi 44 what is the meaning of he also its purpose is to add everything one within the other meaning that in the offering of Abel there was also a portion for the other side and in the offering of Cain there was also a portion for holiness however with Abel the whole and main part of his offering was to the holy one blessed be he and he gave a portion for the other side as is written and of the fat parts thereof the fattest and best was for the holy one blessed be he but with Cain the main was for the end of days which is the other side and he gave only a small portion to the Holy One, blessed be he, therefore he and his offering were rejected. 45 about Job it is written, and his sons used to go and feast, and when the days of their feasting were gone about Eob 14 to 5, and also, and they used to send and call for their three sisters to eat and drink with them, but this was the main portion he gave to the other side, and only afterwards did he offer burnt offerings. Now a burnt offering Hebelah is male rather than female, and holy rises Hebelah, but he did not offer a sacrifice that would properly include it as well, meaning to also give a portion to the other side. Section 5 giving a portion to the other side, we read that if Job had given a portion to everyone, then the insider or negative force would not have been able to approach him later. Rabbi Shimon says that when the other side is given a proper portion, it removes itself from the sanctuary, therefore the side of holiness rises. Higher and higher God aroused the insider against Job because of his incorrect offering we are told that God united with Israel in Egypt at Pascal while the other side was occupied with Job regarding the unleavened bread Rabbi Shimon says that the evil inclination in a person is like yeast in a dough it enters the belly of a person slowly and then multiples there until the whole body is mixed with it this is idolatry 46 come and behold had he given a portion to everyone meaning also to the other side then the insider could not have approached him later one may ask why the holy one blessed be he did him evil for not giving a portion to the other side what is the sin here he answers it was because he caused the light to be covered and concealed for he did not properly offer another offering to sustain others meaning the other side as it has a portion in the offerings but rather offered only a burnt offering Hebelah that ascends Hebelah above and the other side has no part in it. Therefore it is written thus Job did all the days Eo 15 he did not give a portion to the other side for if the other side had been nourished with a proper portion it would have been removed from the sanctuary and would have departed from it and the side of holiness would have risen higher and higher 47 but he did not want another meaning the other side to gain any benefit from his offering so he removed himself from it whence do we know this from from the verse and turns away from evil Eo 15 he removed himself from evil so as not to give it any portion therefore he always offered a burnt offering because the other side never receives any pleasure from it thus whatever the other side took afterwards from Job it took from its own in this way Job caused a foreskin to cover the holy covenant and it did not move from it from the holy covenant therefore the holy one blessed be he aroused against him the insider as it is written have you considered my servant Job 48 Come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he wished to unite with Israel in Egypt the time was not propitious because the foreskin meaning the other side covered the light until the time came and the insider took that which belonged to him from Job and the Holy One blessed be he commanded to eat the Pascal sacrifice in haste meaning while the other side was occupied with Job and commanded the removal of the foreskin from them the Holy One blessed be he united with Israel and the other side separated from holiness and was occupied with Job and took what was its own then it is Hashem's Passover Shemot 1211 for until now the Passover was not Hashem's blessed are they who know how to properly affect the unity of their master 49 it is written you shall make you no molten Elohim Shemot 3417 followed by the feast of unleavened bread had so shall you keep it 18 he asks why is one adjacent to the other he answers this is what has been explained that whoever eats Leaven had Shabbat on Pesach Passover it is as if he worships idols 50 come and behold when Israel left Egypt they left their jurisdiction namely the rule of the other side the rule that is called leaven evil bread therefore idol worship is called by that name Shabbat and leaven this is the secret of the evil inclination that is idol worship which is also called leaven le yeast this is the evil inclination because the evil inclination in the person is like yeast in a dough it enters the belly of the person slowly and then multiplies there until the whole body is mixed with it this is idolatry therefore it is written there shall be no strange L among you tell him 8110 a strange L assuredly section 6 cease from man though his breath be in his nostrils Rabbi Yehuda wonders if the title verse means that people should avoid one another but Rabbi Shimon answers that God has cautioned people to guard themselves from those who have turned to Evil we learn that the Holy Spirit in man consists of three, Nefesh Rash and Neshama Neshama being the highest of all since it is a supernal force with which to know and keep the commandments of God the only thing that can significantly damage the Neshama and lead to idolatry is anger which Rabbi Shimon warns us about strongly he says that one must not even look at the face of an angry man and should certainly not associate with him 51 the festival of unleavened bread had Matzot shall. You keep Shema 3418 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying cease from man though his breath be in his nostrils for in what is he to be accounted of Yeshaya 222 they have established this passage yet what is the meaning of cease from man is the prophet warning to avoid other people and that likewise other people should avoid him it would then come to pass that people would never come near each other he answers they have established this passage as referring to one who arrives early at the door of his friend to greet him before he has blessed the Holy One, blessed be he, and therefore it is said, Cease 52. I have explained the passage, Cease together with another passage that says, He that blesses his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. Mishlei 2714, even though it is all well meaning, even though he has already blessed the Holy One, blessed be he, and it is not necessary to caution about it, Cease what is cease from man. Though his breath be in his nostrils, here the Holy One, blessed be he, has commanded the man and cautioned him to guard himself from those people who have turned from a good way to an evil way and defile themselves with the impurity of the other side. 53. When the Holy One, blessed be he, created man, he made him in the supernal image and blew into him a Holy Spirit combined of three, as we have established, so that he would contain the Feshrash, Neshama, and Neshama is the highest of all of them. For it is a supernal force with which to know and to keep the commandments of the Holy One. Blessed be he if one brings the sacred Neshama into another worship, he defiles it and leaves the service of his master. For these three forces are all one Nefesh Rash and Neshama together in partnership, and they are one as in the supernal secret that Bina and Zeir and Pin and Malchut are one. So to Nefesh Rash and Neshama are one because they stem from them. 54 If we see a man that has all these levels which are Nefesh Rash and Neshama and still not know clearly what he is, how can we determine whether to approach that man or avoid him here? Then in his real anger one could know and recognize him for what he is if he guards the Holy Neshama in his anger so as not to uproot it from its place and bring a foreign L to replace it. Then he is a proper man such as a servant of his master, such as a whole man. 55 If that man does not guard it but uproots the supernal holiness by becoming angry and causes the other side to dwell in its place assuredly such a man has rebelled against his master it is forbidden to come near him or join him such a one tears himself in his anger of 184 he tears and upro
not to idols. Vayikra 194 It is similarly forbidden to look at the face of the angry man. 57 You may ask, but what about the anger of sages? He answers, the anger of sages is good from every aspect, for we have learned that the Torah is fire and the Torah causes him to see as it is written is not my word like a fire, says Hashem. Yermeah 2329 The anger of sages is in the words of Torah. The anger of sages is to give honor to the Torah and it is all in the service of Hashem. Therefore it says Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire, jealous El Devarim 42458. But if the anger is for other matters and not for words of Torah, then it is not the service of the Holy One. Blessed be he of all the sins that a person commits, none are actual idol worship like one who is angry. It is forbidden to approach him if you say that he only temporarily transgressed and became angry, but afterwards repented. It is not so since once he has uprooted the holiness of his soul from himself and from its place, and that strange El appropriated that place, he strengthens himself there and does not leave him. The only exception is when that person becomes entirely purified and has uprooted from himself the strange El forever and afterwards endeavors to become holy and to draw holiness upon himself. Then hopefully he will become holy. Rabbi Yossi said to him, He actually becomes holy. 59 He said to him, Come and behold, at the moment he uproots the holiness of his soul and in its place dwells that. Strange all that is called impure the person becomes defiled and he defiles whoever approaches him that holiness is uprooted from him and when it has been uprooted once in relation to what he did it will never return to its place 60 he said to him yet there are many defiled people who are purified he said to him other impurities are different for they cannot do more than defile him on the outside but one who gets angry is different from them all for his whole body becomes defiled inside and out and he contaminates the soul and everything else other impurities in the world only defile the body on the outside therefore it is written cease from man though his breath be in his nostrils or anger meaning that he exchanged the holiness of his master for his anger such an impurity defiles everything for in what habbama is he to be accounted of he is certainly considered an altar habbama for idol worship section 7 matzot and the counting of it Omer we read that in order to raise Malchut to be connected with the supernal days above men must stand on their feet to count the Omer. The counting of the Omer is the secret of the male being connected to the Holy Covenant so women are exempted from this counting. Rabbi Shimon says that throughout the seven supernal days of Zir and one of the lower days of Malchut becomes holy and this lower day is called the week when the seven Sfirot of Malchut are sanctified through the 49 supernal Sfirot. The house is prepared so that Malchut can join with Zir and then it is called Shabot and the 50th day by rules over the 49 days and by way of awakening the lower beings produces the Torah 61 come and behold this anger is idolatry the other side as we have said thus a person must guard himself against it and separate from it therefore it is written you shall make you no mold in Elohim Shema 3417 make you means you shall not harm yourself and immediately following it is written. The Feast of Unleavened Bread shall you keep, but 18 keep refers to the side of holiness that a person should keep and not exchange it for the other side. If he exchanges it for the other side, he becomes defiled and defile whoever comes near him. 62 This is a place called Shemur. Observe, be careful with guard, namely Malchut that is called Shemur. Therefore, it is written, The festival of Matzot shall you observe. Seven days shall you eat Matzot as I have commanded you. Shema 3418. These seven days of the festival of Matzot are not like the seven days of Sukkot holiday of the boots because those of Sukkot are supernal, namely the seven Sfirot Chisid Burit Tiferet Net Sachot and Malchut of Bunda that Zakar and Mukba ascended and clothed, but those of the festival of Matzot are below, namely the seven Sfirot Chisid Burit Tiferet Net Sachot and Malchut of Malchut. Therefore, during those of Sukkot we say whole hell, and during those of the festival of Matzot we do not. Say whole hell and because there are seven days of below of Malchut it is written seven days shall you eat matzot. The word matzot is found wanting namely missing the letter Vav to show that it was still the interval prior to the dwelling upon them of the supernal days that incorporated the secret of the letter Vav which is Zeir and 63 if you ask if the secret meaning of the feast of unleavened bread has been sanctified since on the first night of Pesach male and female were sanctified and received the Mokin of supernal Abba and Iama that is they rose to be a garment to them why did Malchut again go down from her place have we not learned that one should enhance raise and not lessen lower the importance of holy matters why did she go from Abba and Iama down to the lower seven days 64 come and behold it is written and make atonement for himself and for his house Vayikra 166 to teach that one who atones has to atone for himself first and afterward for his Household similarly this great namely Malchut started to be sanctified and to emerge into holiness during the first night of Pesach in order to atone for herself as soon as she was sanctified she had to atone for her household and sanctify them therefore she came down to sanctify her house how are they sanctified it is through Israel below once they were sanctified they need to raise her up because when the house of the queen which is Malchut is sanctified she then rises to be connected with the supernal days above 65 for this purpose we make a reckoning meaning that we count the Omer standing on our feet because the days that we count are supernal days namely the Sfirot of Zeir Anpin which is male likewise every time a person enters the supernal days of Zeir Anpin both in prayer and in praise that person must stand on his legs so that the legs and body serve there in Zeir Anpin equally together the legs and body must stand like a man who stands with power and not like a woman who customarily sits also for the praise of the upper world one should stand 66 since the counting of the Omer is the secret of the male for we draw the supernal Sfirot of Zeir and women are exempted from this counting only the men are obligated to count in order to bind each one properly thus all you males shall appear Shema 2317 for the males are obligated to appear but not the women this is because the secret of the covenant is in the male but not in the female since the secret is above in the male and Zeir and women are not obligated 67 here we have learned a secret throughout the seven supernal days of Zeir and one of the lower days of Malchut becomes holy this lower day of Malchut is called the week because it is sanctified from the seven supernal days similarly it is so for each and every seven of these fifty supernal days until but not including the fiftieth day meaning that the fiftieth day is not included among those which amend the lower days when there are 49 supernal days present and below in Malchut her seven days are sanctified because each day is amended by seven supernal days for through Chisid Bura Tifer at Netzach Hadizit and Malchut of Chisid of Zeir and Chisid of Malchut is amended and through Chisid Bura Tifer at Netzach Hadizit and Malchut of Bura of Zeir and Bura of Malchut is amended and so on in this manner each one that is amended in Malchut is called the week because it enters into those seven supernal days therefore it is written seven complete Shabbat shall there be Vayikra 2315 which indicates the seven lower days which are Chisid Bura Tifer at Netzach Hadizit and Malchut of Malchut as each one is called the week because they are female being the seven Sfirot of Malchut the Torah uses the feminine suffix for them as is written seven complete Shabbat shall there be Fem 68 when the seven Sfirot of Malchut are sanctified through them the 49 supernal Sfirot the house which is the seven Sfirot of Malchut that were not corrected during the first night of Pesach is prepared so a wife would unite with her husband namely so Malchut would join with Zeir and then it is called Shavuot holiday of weeks after the females meaning the seven Sfirot of Malchut that are called seven weeks as mentioned above over which the supernal days dwell which are the 49 days of Zeir and through which they are sanctified therefore it is written in your feast of weeks Bimidbar 2826 which means that they are yours it is not written in the feast of weeks because just as the seven Sfirot of Malchut were sanctified which are called weeks Israel below were also sanctified with them because Israel below depend upon the sanctification of Malchut from whom they receive therefore it says in your week 69 when we reach 49 days that supernal day which is above them the 50th day which is by rules over the 49 days namely the 49 Sfirot of Zeir and which are the secret of it Entirety of the Torah meaning Zeir Anpin that is called Torah that has 49 aspects and the supernal day which I ask the 50th day by, by means of the awakening of the lower beings produces the Torah, which is Zeir Anpin meaning the Mokin of his three first Sfirot which is the
Translation freedom such as the swallow from the day it nests in the house and has young it lives have dr in the house fifty days and then they separate from each other. This is the bird that is called drower, which means freedom, which alludes to Bana and Malchut is called sparrow seventy one. Come and behold, it is written, and you shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land. Vay two thousand five hundred and ten. The fiftieth year is Bana for from here freedom emerges to everyone because freedom emerges from it. The Torah that emerges from Bana is called freedom have Jera, therefore it is written engraved have Jera on the tablets. Shema three thousand two hundred and sixteen. Do not pronounce it Jera, but rather Jera, for this is the Torah that is called freedom because whatever the supernal day which is Bana brings forth is called freedom and it is freedom for all that day is supernal freedom because there is upper freedom and lower freedom, meaning upper hay which is Bana and lower hay which is Malchut upper freedom and lower freedom which are sabbatical year which is Malchut and Jubilee which is Bina are as one meaning that they clothe each other and then Bina is called upper freedom and Malchut lower freedom section 9 the bread of the first fruits we learned that two types of bread were eaten by Israel when they left Egypt they ate matzah the bread from Malchut when they were in the wilderness they ate manna the bread from heavens or anthony question is asked why now that Israel merited the higher bread was leavened bread not abolished entirely why was the offering of the first fruits leavened bread Rabbi Shimon explains that as soon as Israel had eaten matzah leavened bread could no longer harm them the shamats is burned on the altar and can have no power over Israel when God gave the Torah to Israel he had them taste the supernal bread manna through which they knew and observed the teachings of the Torah after these Explanations Rabbi Shimon and his companions meet an old man holding a boy by the hand. Seventy-two two types of bread were eaten by Israel when they left Egypt. They ate matzah the bread of affliction which is bread from Malchut and in the wilderness they ate bread from heaven which is the bread of Zeir and that is called heaven as it is written Behold I will rain bread from heaven for you. Shemot 164 Therefore the offering of this day of the feast of weeks is bread and all the other offerings were offered with the bread. The bread is the main part as is written and you shall offer with the bread seven lambs. Vayikra 2318 You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of it. Seventeen for this is the bread with which Israel became wise with the supernal wisdom of the Torah and entered its way. Seventy-three We should now observe that during Pesach Israel came away from the bread that is called Shamats as it is written and there shall no leavened bread have Shamats be seen. Shemot 137 and for whoever eats that which is leavened, Shemot 1219, what is the reason that they abandoned Shemots? It is because of the honor of the bread that is called Matzah. He asks now that Israel merited a higher bread, the bread of Zeir and would it not have been proper for the Shemots to be abolished and not be seen at all? Why was the offering of the first fruits bread Shemots as it is written? They shall be of fine flour, they shall be baked with leaven. Vayikra 2317, also on this day the evil inclination was negated, which is the secret of Shemots as the Torah that is called freedom was available. Why then did they bring Shemots? 74, he answers this is similar to a king who had an only son who became ill one day he wished to eat. They said, Let the king's son take this medicine, but before he eats it, no food whatsoever should be in the house. They did so after he had taken the medicine, they said, From now on he may eat whatever he desires and it will do him no harm. 75, similarly. When Israel left Egypt, they did not know the essence and secret of faith. The Holy One, blessed be He, let Israel taste medicine. But while they take this medicine, no other food should be visible to them, namely Shamats. As soon as they had eaten matzah, which is a curative to aid in coming into and knowing the secret of faith, which is Malchut, the Holy One, blessed be He, said, From now on, Shamats is suitable for them, and they may eat it because it can no longer harm them. And more so on the day of Shabbat, when the supernal bread of Zeir and is present, which is a complete cure. Seventy-six. Therefore, we offer Shamats, which is the evil inclination to be burnt on the altar. Meaning, through the offerings that are offered on the altar, two other loaves of bread are offered by waving them together. Others means in addition to the offerings, the Shamats, which is the evil inclination, is burnt in the fire on the altar through the offerings and cannot have power over nor harm Israel. Therefore, Israel. Cleave to the Holy One, blessed be He on this day through the remedy of Torah. If Israel observed those two types of bread, namely matzah and the holy supernal bread of Zeir and then they would never be punished. 77. The day of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which is the day of judgment, is only for those who did not take the medicine, which is matzah, and abandon the remedy of Torah. For through these two remedies, the other food I asked, which is chametz, on this day of Rosh Hashanah, that chametz ascends and accuses the person and slanders him, and is on this day an accuser of the world. The Holy One, blessed be He, sits in judgment over everything and judges the world. 78. Because of this, when the Holy One, blessed be He, gave the Torah to Israel, He had them taste that supernal bread from that place. Malchut through that bread, they knew and observed the secrets of the Torah so as to walk the right way. And the friends have already explained these matters through these secrets as we. Have said 79 Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Lazar his son were traveling on the road accompanied by Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Yussi while they were walking they met an old man who was holding a young boy by the hand Rabbi Shimon raised his eyes and saw him he said to Rabbi Abba assuredly this old man has new ideas for us 80 when they reached him Rabbi Shimon said to him why do you come with a load tied to your back meaning do you not have a donkey to carry your load who are you he said to him I am a Jew Rabbi Shimon said to him you must definitely have certain new matters with you today Rabbi Shimon said to him where is your country he said to him I used to live among those who retired to the wilderness for I was endeavoring there in the Torah now I have come to civilization to sit in the shadow of the Holy One blessed be he during the days of the seventh month 81 Rabbi Shimon rejoiced and said let us sit because certainly the Holy One blessed be he has sent you to us he said to him upon your life we shall hear a word from your mouth of those new yet old matters that you planted there in the wilderness concerning the seventh month why did you leave the wilderness to come to civilization the old sage said to him from this question I know that you possess wisdom and your words reach the firmament of wisdom section 10 and in the wilderness where you have seen the old sage speaks about the reason that God led Israel into the powerful wilderness the domain of Samael when they left Egypt had they not sinned God would have crushed Samael so he would have had no power but because they sinned they spent 40 years in the wilderness to fulfill the verse and you shall bruise his heel we are told that the only light is that light which comes out of the darkness there is no service of God except from out of darkness and no good except from out of evil overall perfection is good and evil together that rise to the good afterward 82 The old sage opened the discussion saying and in the wilderness where you have seen how that Hashem your Elohim bore you as a man bears his son to 131 This passage should have said and in the wilderness where he bore you why does it say where you have seen he answers the Holy One blessed be he spoke to Israel in the wilderness a potent wilderness as is written venomous serpents and scorpions to 815 This wilderness is more potent than any wilderness in the world what is it? Reason that he led Israel there 83 he answers when the children of Israel left Egypt and reached the number of 600,000 the holy Malchut was strengthened and rose above everything and the moon that is Malchut shone and the evil Malchut the other side was subdued and the holy one blessed be he took Israel into the powerful wilderness which is the place and the domain of evil Samael his very own in order to break his power and strength crush his head and subdue him so he will have no power. If the children of Israel had not sinned the Holy One blessed be he planned to remove him from the world therefore he caused Israel to actually pass through his inheritance lot and portion 84 since they sinned many times the snake bit them and then was fulfilled he will bruise your head Bereshit 315 that is the children of Israel hit his head first but did not know how to guard themselves from him afterward the snake bit them and they all fell in the wilderness and then you shall bruise his heel if it was fulfilled for 40 years were they smitten by him corresponding to the 40 lashes decreed by court of law 85 therefore it is written where you have seen because they saw with their own eyes the landlord of the wilderness walking bound before them and they took his possession and lot once do we know this from the verse then the chiefs of Edom shall be amazed Shemot 1515 who are the venomous serpents and scorpions we too retired from civilization to go into the
that preserve the worlds arise from the lower beings if their deeds are correct if they are not maltreated remains without illumination until the wicked are separated from the righteous and then judgment awakens we learn that God gave the shofar to Yisrael in order to break the covering on the moon that prevents it from shining the sound of the shofar arouses mercy below and Bina above the upper world Bina always gives to the lower world maltreated according to its present state so human gladness Below draws supernal gladness. The old sage says that on Yom Kippur, Malchut lights up with a supernal illumination from the light of the world to come. By 88, the old sage opened the discussion, saying, Blow a shofar at the new moon at the full moon, lit the covering on our feast day. Tehillim 814. Now is the time for the supernal harsh judgment to awaken. When it awakens, the other side is strengthened by it. Once the other side grows strong, it rises and covers the moon, which is Malchut, so it does not radiate any light but is filled from the aspect of judgment. Then the whole world is under judgment, both higher and lower beings, and a proclamation is issued throughout all the firmaments. Prepare the throne of judgment for the master over everything, for he wishes to judge. 89. There is a secret here which shone upon us in the wilderness. Why did supernal judgment awaken on this day? He answers all the precious secrets and holy acts stem from the seventh, which is Malchut, and that. Supernal seventh, which is the supernal world that is called the world to come, namely by all the candle sanctifications and blessings shine on Malchut from there. When the time arrives to renew the blessings and holy acts, so they will shine. One should observe the corrections of all the worlds in order to renew the blessings and sanctifications. All the acts of correction that preserve the worlds rise from the lower beings if their deeds are suitable. If they are not right, Malchut remains without illumination until the wicked are separated from the righteous. And then judgment awakens. Ninety from that judgment, the other side is strengthened and the accuser is present, so that the wicked be given over to him, for it is written of him and searches out all perfection. Neo two hundred and eighty-three and covers the moon, so it will not shine. Why does he not give over the wicked to the accuser? Because the holy one blessed be, he does not wish to destroy the works of his hands. Ninety-one in the other side there. Is a hard clipper that is impossible to break except with the counsel the Holy One blessed be he gave the children of Israel as written blow a shofar at the new moon at the full moon lit the covering on our feast day Tehillim 814 in order to break that cover with which the moon is covered which is Malchut so it does not shine 92 when the children of Israel awaken below by the blow of the shofar the sound that emanates from the shofar blasts the air and splits firmaments until it rises to that hard rock namely the other side that covers the moon it observes and brings forth an awakening of mercy then the other side that rises and remains above covering the moon is confounded that sound stands and removes that judgment from Malchut since mercy has awakened below in Malchut another supernal shofar also awakens above which is by and produces a sound namely the mokin of Zeir and that is called sound which is mercy sound meets sound mercy meets mercy because by the lower Awakening there is also an awakening above 93 you may ask how a sound below or an awakening below awakened that which corresponds to it above come and behold the lower world which is Malchut is always ready to receive and is called the precious stone the upper world which is Bina gives it according to its state if its state is of a shiny countenance from below in the same manner it is shown upon from above but if it is in sadness it is correspondingly given judgment 94 similarly serve Hashem with gladness Tehillim 1002 because human gladness draws another supernal gladness thus just as the lower world namely Malchut is crowned so it draws from above therefore the children of Israel are early to rouse with the shofar sound which is combined of fire water and air namely the central column which is combined of three columns they become one which rises and strikes the precious stone that is colored with these three colors which are white red and green which are three Columns combined in this sound, and then it draws from above as it deserves. 95. Once Malchut has been perfected with this sound from below, mercy emerges from above and dwells upon her, and she becomes included in mercy from below and above. Then the other side is confounded, and its power is weakened, and it cannot accuse this precious stone, which is Malchut, remains with radiant countenance in every direction with illumination from below and illumination from above. 96. When does she remain? With the illumination from above on Yom Kippur, day of atonement for on Yom Kippur, that precious stone is lit up, namely Malchut, with a supernal illumination from the light of the world to come, which is by then the children of Israel prepare a goat and send it to this potent wilderness which rules over its section 12. The kingdom of heaven is divided by two points. We are told that the central point of the desolate world is the other side, and the central point of it. Inhabited world is the holy side where Jerusalem is found. The kingdom of heaven stands on two points. One is Jerusalem, and the other is the terrestrial garden of Eden. In the middle of that garden is a hidden point into which a pillar is inserted from below. From there, water flows that separates to the four directions of the world. Ninety-seven. That other side is the central point of the portion of the desolate world because the other side has power over all destruction and desolation that is in the world. The central point of that portion of the inhabited world is the holy side, which is Malchut. Therefore, Jerusalem is in the center of the inhabited world, which is the secret of Malchut. Ninety-eight. The kingdom of heaven, the side of holiness, is divided by two points. One of its own, and another that it received from the world to come, which is Bina, which is a supernal hidden point. Therefore, the kingdom stands on two points. Its own point is under it, which is Jerusalem, which is the center of the whole. Civilization, the hidden point that it received from Supernalia, may the world to come is the terrestrial garden of Eden that is located in the center of the world in all its aspects, those of desolation and habitation and all the aspects of the world. 99, therefore, in the middle of the garden of Eden, there is a supernal point covered and concealed since it is unknown. A pillar is inserted from below up within that point and from there gushes water that separates to the four directions of it. World, so we find that there are three points in the world, one on top of the other, like the three points in the Torah section 13. Two goats, the old sage wonders why Israel sent two goats for sacrifice, one for Azazel in the wilderness and one to God. Rabbi Shimon explains that the slanderer will think he ate from his meal and will not know of the other joyous meal prepared for God and those he loved even when Israel are in exile when they pray Malchut ascends before God. On Yom Kippur and asks mercy for her children and God declares all his vengeance against Edom and the slanderer is removed from the world because of this the children of Israel are free and joyful Rabbi Shimon tells why a young goat is sacrificed rather than a grown one he speaks about atonement Kippur and says that it is so called because it cleanses all impurity from a person so that God forgives him we read that there are five deprivations on Yom Kippur eating and drinking washing anointing wearing shoes and having marital relations these deprivations are so that the person may be helped by the five supernal aspects Chesed Burit Tiferet Netzach and Hod 100 come and behold Israel sent the goat to Azazel to the wilderness so as to give a portion to the other side with which to be occupied you may ask why there are two goats here one for Hashem and one for the other side it is understandable to send the goat of the other side to Azazel but why the goat to Hashem 101 he answers it is similar to a king who was angry with his son he summoned the bailiff who regularly meted out justice to people in order to come and punish his son the bailiff rejoiced and entered the king's palace to eat there as soon as the son saw him he thought certainly the only reason this bailiff has come to my father's palace is because the king is angry with me what did he do he tried to please him once he pleased him the king ordered a magnificent feast for himself and his son and commanded that the bailiff would not know of it afterward the bailiff came the king thought now if he knows of the grand feast that i prepared for my son and myself there will be confusion at the table what did he do he called the butler in charge over the feast and told him prepare something to put before me and the bailiff so that the bailiff would think that he dined with me and would not know about that other precious feast for me and my son he would then take that portion and leave and Disengage from our joyous feast if the king had not done this that bailiff would not have left the king's palace 102 so did the holy one blessed be he say to Israel prepare two goats one for me and one for that slanderer namely the other side so that he will think that he ate from my meal and will not know of the other our own joyous meal let him take that portion and go his way and depart from my house since supernal IMA which is the world to come namely by the came to dwell in the sanctuary of the lower world to observe it with a radiant face it is only right that the slanderer would not be present nor the plaintiffs when he takes out all the blessings and illuminates everything and all manner of freedom is available in Malchut and
106 Even when the children of Israel are in exile and pray daily Malchut ascends on this day Yom Kippur before the king and asks for her children and all vengeance that the Holy One blessed be he is going to bring against Edom are decreed and it is decreed how the slanderer will be removed from this world as is written he will destroy death forever Yeshua 258 107 Bear in mind that it is written about the time of exile for we are sold I and my people since the affliction would not have equaled the king's damage Esther 74 What is the king's damage it is as you say and cut off our name from the earth and what will you do for your great name Yahashua 79 because the great name will no longer be maintained and this is the king's damage 108 Then Haman, who is the other side, was struck with terror before the king and the queen Esther 76 Then every shining face and every joy is present and the children of Israel go out free on that day, Yom Kippur from that day. And onward freedom and joy openly rule over them and he wishes to rejoice with them from here on just as a portion is given to the other side so that he shall depart from Israel a portion is also given to the other nations so that they depart from Israel below 109 come and behold what is the secret meaning of offering a goat rather than something else why is it that on the first day of the month we offer a goat and also here on Yom Kippur if you say that it is because the goat is of its aspect it is well but why not an adult goat have easy but a young goat have seir which is small 110 he answers this is needed namely just a goat and it is known to all those who perform witchcraft who perform it only with that which has not yet mated with a female therefore all the young goats which have not yet mated with a female are among its species of the other side and the reason is that a strange is sterile and produces no fruit but a grown goat has already mated with a female and Produced fruit, therefore, it is not in the portion of the other side, since the other side is a king, as is written, an old and foolish king, Kahila 413. In its honor, a young goat is given one that never mated with a female and did not give of his strength to another of his own kind, as mentioned. And each sorcerer who performs these functions knows this, therefore, they lay all their sins on that young goat. 111. Come and behold, even though the young goat is the portion of the other side, there is a secret here, for in the side of impurity, the lower the aspects, the greater their impurity, and the more the lower grades descend, the greater is their impurity. Therefore, the portion of the other side is greater in the grown goat, because its hairs hang down more than any other animal, just as their judgments stem below in impurity. The impurity of this evil kingdom, which is the king of the entire other side, is clearer and more refined and is not as completely impure as the lower ones, therefore, it is. Given a young goat hepsir lahari whose hair does not hang down and is not smooth it is not smooth because of its impurity but the hair does not hang downward so that the impurity shall not grow strong like these lower grades of the other side therefore it is surely a young goat and nothing else 112 he asks why is it called atonement hepkipper he answers because it cleanses all impurity and removes it from before him on this day therefore it is called yomkipper which means a day of cleansing thus we call it it is written for on that day will he forgive you to cleanse you vayikra 1630 he asks why does it say for on that day it should have said for this day he answers because the celestial temple which is malchut was purified and lit up therefore it is written for on that day will he forgive you which means he shall forgive and cleanse first this day namely malchut so that he may purify and forgive you afterwards 113 another explanation he shall forgive on that day which is Malchut and cleanse it first the only reason it needs to be cleansed is you that is for your sake it needs to be cleansed and purified first he shall forgive he asks who shall forgive and he answers it is the upper world which is by that illuminates and cleanses everything therefore all the evil aspects which are called the depths of the sea are removed as these depths of the sea are drooping down so are the hairs of the young goat which pertains to its side namely the other side the hairs of that side are not smooth but are coarse which alludes to judgments 114 similarly it is written and he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression in all their sins Vayikra 1616 meaning that the accuser will not have power over them therefore on Yom Kippur which is the wiping away of all the sins and their cleansing Israel should purify themselves and walk barefoot like the Lofty angels, there are five deprivations on Yom Kippur which are eating and drinking, washing, anointing, wearing shoes, and marital relations in order to be helped by five supernal aspects which are Shisad, Burit, Typhur, Abnet, Sach, and Had, which Yom Kippur which is Bina brought forth and which are its gates. 115 of drinking is considered as a separate deprivation, and there are six deprivations because drinking is from the side of Isaac, which is Burit, and eating is from the side of Abraham, which is Shisad. This is why there are two, even though drinking is included in eating, so then there are six. The last deprivation is marital relations and is located in the sixth level, which is Yezid, and corresponding to it, we perform the deprivation section 14. On the tenth day of the seventh month, the old sage explains why the Yom Kippur is on the tenth day. We learn of the seventy years that apply to everyone. We learn that on Yom Kippur one must not reveal his sins. To another because the accusers may use it against him and besides it is shameless to reveal one's sins, it is a desecration of God's holy name the seventh month is God's but he gave it to Israel as a revelation this entire month is from the upper world by therefore it is covered because the upper world is in concealment on the fifteenth day of the month it is revealed since everything becomes revealed with the fullness of the moon from this day the Sfirot descend to the secret of it. Lower world Malchut the old sage and Rabbi Shimon discuss the question of who passed judgment on the world on Rosh Hashanah and why Malchut judges only those who are twenty years of age or older one hundred and sixteen it is written on the tenth day at Bezer of the seventh month Bimidbar two hundred and ninety-seven and also on the tenth day of this month Vayikra two thousand three hundred and twenty-seven he asks why it is written Bezer on day ten when it should say tenth why ten he answers it is because now on this day all the high grades come upon. Each other meaning that the ten Sfirot that have three first Sfirot are drawn from IMA to rest upon the moon which is Malchut to shine on it and they all pertain to the secret of ten so they add up to a hundred because ten times ten equals a hundred when it is based on the secret of a hundred meaning that it has first three Sfirot then it is all one for Malchut is one with IMA and both are called the day of atonement therefore it is written on day ten Hebezer which is derived from the word. Source has written remember Shema 208 and keep the Barim 512 this is because tenth Hebezer means an allusion to Malchut only which is the tenth sphere of a ten which is derived from source indicates all ten Sfirot together for they all come from IMA in order to multiply by ten every sphere and shine by means of ten namely also including the three first Sfirot 117 the old sage turned towards Rabbi Shimon and said to him I know that you have a question about this passage on the Tenth day of this month Rabbi Shimon said to him certainly on day ten what you said that it points to ten is fitting but if it is so why does it add up to a hundred from the passage it seems that it all adds up only to seventy for it is written on day ten of the seventh month and when you multiply seven by ten it equals seventy he said to him for this did I turn to you because I know you are a wise man one hundred and eighteen come and behold there are two secrets here the first is that the moon which is Malchut is called the seventh month and therefore the seventh month is called ten as it says on day ten of the seventh month this is because they shine on a tenfold meaning ten spirot and ten times ten equals a hundred there is another secret here because what you said that ten indicates multiplying seven by ten assuredly amounts to seventy on that day in such a manner that it is both in the level of seventy and in the level of a hundred ITIS in the level of a hundred in order to Make it whole with the three first Sfirot and shine on it and it is in the level of seventy because on this day Malchut receives all Israel in order to judge them they are all in the soul rather than in the body because on this day the soul is afflicted but not the body as is written and you shall afflict your souls Vayikra 2327 and for whatever person lit soul shall not be afflicted of it twenty nine for that day takes all the souls and they are under its authority had it not been of the secret of seventy it would not have authority over the souls because souls are maintained by means of seventy as it is written the days of our years are seventy Tehillim 9010 119 you may argue that the souls of the children have not completed seventy years and say that Malchut has no power over them he answers certainly she has power over them but not completely as over one who merited for many days the commandments of the Torah even so the seventy years apply to everyone both children and
Another because there are many accusers who take this word which he has revealed and bring it up and testify against that word as the verse says from her that lies in your bosom guard the doors of your mouth. Misha 75 Surely these accusers go after him and study how to accuse him and testify against him but in addition to this he is shameless towards everyone who is not abashed to reveal his sins which is a desecration of the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he therefore it is written do not. Let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Kahila 55 122 He opened the discussion saying this month shall be to you the beginning of months. Shema 122 He asks do not all the holidays and months belong to the Holy One. Blessed be he why does it say this month shall be to you. He answers this month shall be to you means it is mine but I gave it over to you. To you means that it is revealed meaning that the lights are revealed in it for Israel but the seventh month is mine therefore it is. Covered and not revealed as is written at the full moonlit covered of our feast day. Tehillim 814 Your month is according to the sequence of the alphabet in the order of Abib. Let's bring because Nisan is called the month of Abib. Aleph Bet Yud Bet. This is Aleph Bet Gimel because Yud Bet of Abib is the secret of Gimel because the reduced numerical value of Yud is one. Thus the letters of Abib Aleph Bet Yud Bet numerically equal Aleph Bet Gimel. But the seventh month is mine. Therefore its name starts with the last letters of the alphabet, namely Tishrei Tav Shin Resh Yud. What is the reason you are in forward sequence Aleph Bet Gimel, which I ask from below up, namely the letters increase in numerical value first Aleph equals one and Bet equals two, etc. But I am in backward order Tav Shin Resh Yud, which I ask from above down because the letters decrease in value first Tav equals four hundred Shin equals three hundred and then Resh equals two hundred one hundred and twenty three. The seventh month is mine. At the beginning of the month I am covered on the tenth of it. Month I am covered because I am so during the first five days of the month during the other five days and during the third set of five days at the beginning of the month I am so because it is of the five first days during the tenth day of the month I am so because it is part of the other five days during the fifteenth day of the month I am so because it is part of the third five days one hundred and twenty four he asks what is the reason it is so covered that is until the fifteenth day of the month he answers. Because this entire month is from the upper world meaning from Bana and the upper world is under the secret of five at any time therefore this month is covered rather than revealed because the upper world is in concealment and all its aspects are covered this month is for the holy one blessed be he alone and is not to you upon the fifteenth day of the month it is revealed everything reaches the renewal of the moon therefore the moon is full and shines from supernal IMA which is Bana and is. Ready to illuminate downwards from the lights above, therefore the fifteenth day of the month is called by the name first as is written, and you shall take for yourselves on the first day Vayikra 2340 until now, meaning until the fifteenth day all the Sfirot were based on the secret of the upper world which is Bana from the fifteenth day the Sfirot descend to the secret of the lower world which is Malchut 125. Come and behold the first days before the fifteenth of the month came from the supernal day, namely Bana as it is the secret of the upper world. Bana he asks if so who passed judgment on the world on Rosh Hashanah, who since there is no judgment in this world except the judgment of the lower world which Elohim of the whole earth shall he be called Yeshua 545. If you say that the judgment of the world is passed above in Bana, then Bana would not be called the world of freedom, a world in which the lights of all the worlds exist, the world that contains all life. World of all liberty since Bina is called by all these names how can you say that it contains the judgment to judge the whole world if you say it is derived from the judgment of Isaac namely the left column of Bina this is impossible because if it aroused judgment for this world and the whole world could not bear it for no one can bear the strong supernal fire of the left column of Bina except for the lower fire which is Malchut which is a fire that bears fire 126 he answers just as this world of ours is the lowest of all worlds so are all its judgments from the lowest world in Atzalam which is Malchut that is called Elohim the judge and her judgments are considered supernal judgment in relation to this lower world of ours therefore they are considered in relation to us like the judgments of Bina and because she is the seventh level of Zeir and the decree is only issued against a man who is twenty years and older 127 that sage looked at Rabbi Shimon and saw that his eyes were shedding tears. Rabbi Shimon said, If she is seventh, why does she judge the person of twenty years of age and older? He said to him, Blessed is he who speaks to ears that hear one hundred and twenty eight. Come and behold, the lower terrestrial court of law does not pass judgment against the person until he is thirteen years of age. What is the reason? It is because they leave seven years for the seventh Elohim of the whole earth shall he be called. Yeshua 545. A person has no authority over the seven and the seven rest upon the thirteen below which are a throne for it. Therefore, all the decrees and all the judgments of below come from the lower seven which summit to twenty years. One hundred and twenty nine. The judgment of the world on Rosh Hashanah is carried through this level that actually stands in judgment over her children in this world in order to be purified for the higher world. She has no assistance to rise and be purified except from the lower beings, namely that they should repent and raise Mayim Lupin. Female water section 15 four kinds Rabbi Shimon and the old sage discuss the verse and you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of the tree hitter saying that hitter is the righteous namely is it and that Malchut is the fruit of the tree hitter they speak about the palm trees the boughs of thick leaf trees and the two willows of the brook they conclude that we are commanded to take these four kinds since we need to awaken below in the likeness of above there is nothing in the world that has no counterpart above and the reverse is also true 130 when Israel are in the 15th day of the seventh month the holy one blessed be he takes his children and spreads his wings over them to rejoice with them therefore it is written and you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of the tree hitter Vayikra 2340 this fruit is the tree that is called fruit tree namely Malchut and bears fruit tree hitter as is written honor and majesty had are before him Tehillim 966 why is it called Hitter and who is Hitter it is the righteous namely Yizit and Malchut is called the fruit of the tree Hitter meaning Malchut that receives from Yizit that is called Hitter 131 he asks why is Yizit called Hitter it is a covered place which is not revealed but should always be covered yet majesty is only upon someone that is revealed and seen he answers even though it is a covered level it is the majesty of the whole body and there is no majesty to the body but in it what is the reason ITIS because one who does not have that great has no majesty to come among people he has no voice when he speaks because the majesty of the voice is cut from him he has no beard or the majesty of a beard so even though that great is covered nevertheless all the majesty of the body originates in it and is covered and revealed through the majesty of the body therefore it is the tree Hitter majesty meaning a tree from which all the Majesty of the body comes this is a fruit tree yielding fruit but Malchut is called fruit tree 132 branches of palm trees Vayikra 2340 is yes, the righteous as it is written the righteous man flourishes like the palm tree Tehillim 9213 here a wife is comprehended in her husband without separation because it is written branches of palm trees instead of and branches of palm trees for the boblet and would divide between fruit of the tree hitter and the branches of palm trees this shows that they are tied together for Yezid and Malchut are together and the boughs of thick leaf trees Vayikra 2340 there are three meaning the three columns Chesed, Bura and Tiferet because it has three leaves one on the right side one on the left side and the one in the center that dominates them because the central column unites the right and left into one there are two willows of the brook of it namely Netzach and Hod which have neither scent nor taste being the aspect of legs in People love lip palm leaf which is yes it receives and combines them all like the spinal cord that is in the body it protrudes outside the other kinds by a hand's breadth upwards and so it needs to be in order to perfect and bring forth all the levels for proper union 133 with these kinds one must show himself before the holy one blessed be he for they correspond to chesed bureau typhoret net sash and malchut the leaves of these palm trees allude to all the other hosts that unite under all the other appellations by which the holy one blessed be he is called therefore we are commanded to take these four kinds since we need to awaken below in the likeness of above for there is nothing in the world that does not have a counterpart above and in reverse as it is above so is it below because the worlds are imprinted by one another and the roots
Written you shall dwell in Booth Hepsukot seven days Vayikra 2342 This is the secret of faith which is Malchut who receives all her mokin by the secret of this passage This verse refers to the supernal world which is Bani as we have learned when the world was created This verse was said 135 when Chakma, namely supernal Abba and Ima that are called Abba and Chakma, commenced to emerge from the unknown and unseen place namely from the head of Eric and then a curtain emerged and struck that supernal Chakma sparkled and spread in all directions in the secret of the supernal tabernacle which is Yisrael Sab and Tevuna that is called Bana and Ima that supernal tabernacle brought forth six extremities which are Zeir and Ben and then the sparkling of the curtain illuminated everything and is written you shall dwell in Booth seven days 136 Why is Sukkot spelled without the Bob this is the lower tabernacle namely Malchut that is like a lantern which is a Glass utensil into which a candle is placed to light to show all lights and the glittering of the curtain said you shall dwell in booths have Sukkot seven days who are the seven days there from the supernal world which is binded to the lower world which is Malchut for all the seven days which are Shisad Bure Tifer at Netzach Hadiyazit and Malchut of Bana maintain their existence to shine on this tabernacle have Sukkot what is it it is the tabernacle of David that is fallen name is 911 the tabernacle of peace namely Malchut and the holy nation should sit under its shade in the secret of faith which is Malchut one who sits in the shadow sits among these supernal days of Bana 137 therefore Sukkot is always spelled without a Bob which alludes to Malchut as mentioned but in one place it is spelled Sukkot plain it shows that whoever sits in the shadow of the glittering of the curtain mentioned above sits among these supernal days of above namely Shisad Bure Tifer Netzach Hadiyazit and Malchut Abana that are over the lower which is Malchut to illuminate her, cover her and protect her when necessary 138 and it can also be said that they are all read Sukkot in full and that which is written Sukkot without the Bob refers to the lower world which is Malchut she has to feed the other appointed ministers of the world during these holy seven days which is the secret of the seventy oxen that are offered during the seven days of Sukkot while she still receives joy from her husband this is necessary for her in order that they do not incite during the joy and she allows them to delight themselves with that food their offerings are more plentiful than usual so that they are occupied with them and do not mingle in the joy of the children of Israel this is similar to giving a portion of the goat of the first day of the month and the goat to Azazel what is the joy of the children of Israel this is on Shemini Atzeret the eighth day of Sukkot day. A convocation 139 come and behold while the other appointed princes are rejoicing and eating that food that the children of Israel prepare for them namely the 70 oxen they prepare a throne for the Holy One blessed be he from below at the same time, meaning that they are preparing Malchut to be a throne for the Holy One blessed be he to elevate her up with these four kinds with the joy of Sukkot and the recitation of Hallel and by circling the altar she Malchut ascends and receives blessings and joy in her husband in Zeir and 140 the other living creatures which are the 70 appointed princes of the nations he and Shuel and the residue of their eating they trample with their feet and they are sustained that is by the 70 oxen as mentioned she Malchut takes the souls and elevates them to the supernal delight to Zeir and as we have said as she descended and holds all the blessings and holiness and delights that the children of Israel draw down during all these seven days through these actions and offered sacrifices to her then she descends to be close to her children and to make them happy for one day that day is the eighth day because all the other seven days are with her as explained therefore it is the eighth and it is eight days united therefore it is called Atzeret meaning gathered because all the seven days gathered together on that eighth day have Shemini Atzeret and it is called eighth namely the eighth day of convocation it is eighth only because of the inclusion of the seven therefore it is called by two names it is called eighth because it is eighth of the seven days and it is called convocation because it includes within itself all the seven days together section 17 may the name of Hashem be blessed we learned that the secret of the title verse was revealed to Rabbi Yitzhak Kaptur in a dream it means that the word blessed member it begins hard but ends soft this is like on Rosh. Hashanah where it is hard with harsh judgment and on Shemini where it is soft with joy we read of the difference between the upper judgment that is male and the lower judgment that is female the latter begins hard but softens until it is joyful on the eighth day of convocation the upper judgment awakened on the day of the flood but since then it has not dwelt upon the world because the world cannot bear it even for a moment it was the mercy of Hashem that saved the entire world from being destroyed after this explanation the old sage reveals his identity he is Nirei Saba and we learned that Nirei means like 141 it is written blessed be the name of Hashem of 121 what is meant by blessed there is one secret that one of our friends knew that was shown to him in a dream and his name is Rabbi Yitzhak Kaptur he said what is meant by blessed have Mevrik it means that its beginning is hard and its end soft because Mevrik is spelled with the letters M E M Bet. Vavrash C.A.F. M.E.M. Bet is hard and is definitely judgment like the day of Rosh Hashanah is M.E.M. Bet because the world was created with M.E.M. Bet 42 letters namely 32 times Elohim and the 10 sayings which equal 42 similarly there are 42 letters from the bed of Bereshit lit in the beginning until the bed of the word B.O.H.U. and void therefore it was created with judgment but afterwards it is Rash Rash C.A.F. Litzoff therefore we have learned that all beginnings are hard but their endings are easy. Because on the day of Rosh Hashanah it is M.E.M. Bet with harsh judgment and on Shemini Atzeret it is soft with joy 142 come and behold what is the difference between the upper judgment namely the left column of Bino which is the secret of Isaac that it is the male light and this judgment of the female in the supernal judgment in the male that illuminates from above downwards both the beginning and the end are hard and no one can withstand those judgments the more it goes on the stronger. It grows once it begins it does not leave one until it consumes and destroys everything and nothing is left but in the other lower judgment, namely in Malchud which is the light of the female that illuminates from below upwards. The beginning is hard namely on Rosh Hashanah and as it proceeds and expands it weakens until the mokin of the face shines on the eighth day of convocation this is like the female whose strength is weak 143 he asks when does the upper judgment of the male awaken. To dwell on the world he answers on the day of the flood therefore nothing was left in the world except for Noah's ark which is similar to the supernal ark which is Malchud which bears that harshness of judgment being a fire that bears fire if the holy one blessed be he had not prepared the ark for him and if there has been no mercy in the world the whole world would have been destroyed as it is written Hashem Yudhebav he sat enthroned at the flood Tehillim 2910 for the name of Yudhebav. Hayes mercy therefore from then and onwards the upper judgment does not dwell upon the world because the world cannot bear it even for one moment 144 in the meantime Rabbi Shimon was weeping and rejoicing they raised their eyes and saw five people of those who retired to the wilderness who went after the old sage to seek him to speak to them of the Torah they rose Rabbi Shimon said from now on what is your name he said Nirei Saba since there is another Nirei among us they call me Nirei Saba they walked with him Rabbi Shimon and his company for three miles Rabbi Shimon said to these other people why are you making this trip they said we came to seek the sage to teach us Torah because we drink his water in the wilderness that is they are his students in the wilderness Rabbi Shimon approached and kissed that sage he said to him your name is Nirei and you are a light and the light dwells with you because Nirei means light section 18 he Knows what is in the darkness. Rabbi Shimon explains that the title verse means that God revealed profound and concealed things for were it not for the darkness of the left, the depths and the concealed things would not be revealed. He says that the light dwells with him refers to the light that has been revealed from within the darkness, and this light was revealed to all of us from the darkness that was in the wilderness. 145. Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying he reveals the deep end. Secret things he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. Daniel 222. He reveals the deep and secret things means that the Holy One blessed be he reveals the deep and secret things. He reveals all the supernal concealed depths, namely the central column that reveals the depths of the two columns of Bible. Why did he reveal them? It is because he knows what is in the darkness, namely in the darkness of the left where the light of Chakma sinks because of the lack of Chesedim. If there